Drinking buddies, just for fun, I took a couple of these Jack Daniel single barrel barrel proofs and did my own little home blend. And I put them in this cool decanter. Sorry for the tease, it's not really Koi Hill. I'm your drinking buddy. <sighs> All right, drinking buddies, so I've been doing a little bit of home blending lately. I have about probably about 12 to 15 experiments going on right now at the moment. Uh, but I took a couple of these Jack Daniel single barrel barrel proofs and did a blend here. What what went in here? Well, I took two Jack Daniel single barrel barrel proofs that had a really great flavor profile and one that had a pretty good flavor profile, but a really long, ridiculously long finish. And my goal was to create a product that had a really long finish with those good flavors off of the other two. So there's three different barrels that went into this one. Um, and this one is just a master distiller selection 129.1 proof single barrel so that's in this glass and this is my home blend so let's take this one first see what we got here oh yeah it's just like <sighs> boozy bananas and oak cinnamon I can't help but notice that now, all of a sudden, I get I get a lot of cherry off a lot of Jack Daniels recently. Um, but yeah, that's cherry banana. Um, that is oak and brown sugar. There's some bourbon vanilla here. Um, that is an excellent Jack Daniels single barrel beer proof. No way around describing it any other way. By the way, um, for the longest time, I was able to find these 375s for, and it would be cheaper than buying, or two, buying two of these would be cheaper than buying the big boy. And not this, but a big three, a big 750 of these. And uh, um, I found that that was really cool because it allowed me to try a bunch of different barrels. So I bought probably like five or six of these things, maybe more, to be honest. Anyway, look for the 375s if you can. It allows you to try more barrels to see what the unique difference is between all of them. All right, so that is very, very good. Let's see if I can beat it or if I just screwed it up and I ruined three barrels. <laughs> or I ruined three bottles, I mean. The nose is better. And this one's got a little bit of leather and tobacco on it. This smells older. Maybe I just added a little extra complexity. So the cherry is still here, but it's more subtle. There's more cherry on this one. This one's got almost no noticeable banana, which is kind of fun because I almost always get Jack Daniels, you know, banana. I think on the single barrel expressions, you get more like, you know, on a single barrel, you often will get less notes. You get more of a uh, of a narrow flavor profile, not in a bad way. You're experiencing something in a really unique way. Whereas something on a blend, you are get, it's more of like music. It's like jazz. There's more going on. And that's what I'm experiencing over here. There's there's maple, there's brown sugar, there's that leather and tobacco thing on the nose come through. There's just, this is more of a dance of flavors. I don't know if I succeeded on the finish. Let's see if I can figure that out. Little peanut on the finish over here. Okay, so I did pair the bottles together that I wanted to use intention with the intention that uh, I wanted it to make keep that long finish and I definitely succeeded here. There's a longer finish here. Um, I don't necessarily know if I like the palette better over here than this one, but this is a really exceptional single barrel. So I think I might like the, the nose and the finish better though, because the finish is longer. Try some home blending drinking buddies. I think it's really fun. And don't think that you can take 
great whiskey A and great whiskey B and mix them together and make great whiskey C. Um, that's not necessarily something that'll happen. In fact, I, some of the blends I've done, I've ended up ruining great whiskeys because a great whiskey plus great whiskey doesn't equal great whiskey. Now, sometimes bad whiskey plus good whiskey equals great whiskey. Uh, it's just all about, you know, will the flavors mesh? Will they will they blend well together? Can, can one help add a complexity to a, a kind of a, a weak whiskey with a long finish? Can a whiskey with a really interesting nose that doesn't have much of a palate going on, can, can you fix that by blending it with something with a really crazy finish and a really crazy palate? So look to try to be adventurous. Um, I find one of the best mixers for mixing up uh, blends that I have discovered is Larceny Barrel Proof. And I don't even like Larceny Barrel Proof, but they blend phenomenally. Um, I find that you put a little Larceny Barrel Proof, mix it with something else, you're adding like a ton of complexity. You're adding some really great flavors, but it you, you, it works. It, I don't know why it works, but it does. Anyway, drinking buddies, I really appreciate all of you. Um, I wouldn't exist if it wasn't for you. Every time you guys like the video, every time you guys subscribe to the channel, you make this thing possible. And so just do me a favor. If you haven't liked the videos, if you haven't subscribed, please do that for me. And uh, if you want to get involved in our community we're building, um, we have a channel membership opportunity. I am one of the cheaper available options out there as far as WhiskeyTube goes. And uh, you can join our Discord. We do local blinds. You know, the, the people in this community are amazing. They're sending each other samples all the time. And, and we're chatting every day. So if you want to be part of a really cool community, consider it. Anyway, drinking buddies, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.